To frack or not to frack? That is a controversial question across the United States these days. Our next guest firm has raised more than $1.2 billion focused in funds uh, on funds focused, I should say, on oil and gas services. To put it simply, he says fracking is here to stay and should be a huge job creator. With us now is Charles Charrington from Intervale Capital. It's great to see you, Charles. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And your private equity firm has made a big play in this area. Why do you see opportunity and why do you think other more traditional players like the banks uh, have been more cautious? Well, it's a manufacturing business in the United States now. If you look at fracking, uh, horizontal wells, you're almost certainly going to hit oil or gas every time you drill. Um, production is fairly predictable and therefore it's a, a business with dependable, steady returns. Uh, we have decades of drilling inventory in front of us in the United States, uh, so it's a, it's a play that looks like it has long legs. There are plenty of environmental concerns about the, uh, the impact that fracking has on the environment. How do you address that? I mean, that is, if anything, that's the biggest stumbling block right now for those who don't want to see that kind of activity, even though it would make us much, much more energy in a, in independent right now. Absolutely. It's a great question. Fracking has been going on in the United States uh, oil field since the 1940s. We've fracked over a million wells. What's really new is horizontal fracking. So it's that the, we're, we're drilling the wells horizontally rather than vertically. We're using higher pressures. Um, it's a well-established practice. There's no evidence uh, that fracking itself causes problems. And I think it's a little bit of a misdirection in a way. What really causes problems in these wells is poor well construction. And by that we mean it's a bad cementing job so that there are gaps between the well and the cement. That can cause gas or hydrocarbons to escape to the surface. There are poor water management techniques, so there may be improper disposal. There are chemical spills at the surface. So there are plenty of things for the industry to be concerned about and to keep an eye on. But frankly, fracking just isn't one of them. At the same time, Charles, how efficient is fracking, generally speaking? Because we have these big oil fields that were discovered 75 years ago and are still relatively productive, while a lot of the newer wells drilled through fracking methods seem to have high and quick exhaustion rates. That's a great question. About 75% of the oil we consume globally comes from reservoirs discovered before 1980. However, those big finds are extremely rare now, particularly in the U.S., but also on a worldwide level. So the kinds of giant fields like Al Gawar in Saudi Arabia, which have been producing for decades, are largely have been discovered globally, number one, and number two are becoming much more challenging from a production standpoint. So what's going to have to happen going forward is that we're going to have to find reserves in unconventional places. And that fracking is a great example of that. So, yeah, the wells will come on very strong and then they'll decline rapidly. Right. But if we don't go to techniques like fracking, we're simply going to lose production globally. So it's going to be an essential part of, of future production. And uh, very quickly, because we're running out of time, but another huge challenge you face is finding the workers. You know, we talk about how the jobs are available, but many people just don't want to relocate to the places where the, the, the uh, drilling is going on right now. How bad is that for you right now? I'd say a big part of what we do at Interville Capital is focus on bringing talented people into our portfolio companies. Uh, you know, the industry as a whole has created about two and a half million jobs, direct and indirect, over the last decade. We expect we're going to need another four million workers in the oil field and related segments over the next decade. And, you know, you have to offer relocation packages. You have to offer housing in certain cases if it's a tough environment like the Bakken Shale in North Dakota. The even bigger problem is that people over 55, the sort of wise men of the industry, are retiring and they're in scarcer supply and they're the people with sort of the knowledge uh, to really make the oil field run. Charles. So incentivizing those senior folks is really very important too. So to be clear, you're not necessarily saying that if anyone shows up, they're going to get a job. You're saying you actually face a shortage of workers that could take a decade or more to fill. Well, I'm saying that there will be continued job creation in the oil field. We face real challenges in the basins right now filling those positions. Um, and what's happened is that we've had to bid wages up in order to compete for that labor. And we've right. had to make uh, sort of conditions attractive by providing housing, et cetera. So we'll continue to attract labor, but it's by unconventional means. Just like the fracking. Just like the fracking. <laughs> Charles, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Great to see Appreciate you. Appreciate your thank thoughts. Thank you very on that. much.